All right, peeps, welcome to the Culture in People cast. Today we have Jana Masik. Jana, in a few sentences, would you tell us who you are and what you do? Well, Anna, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I am very passionate about helping professionals to expand their vision, help them to see what is possible for them, and also help them strengthen their discernment, which is really a sense of good judgment so they can improve their decision making. Um, as well as helping them to, through improving that decision-making, improve their performance so they can achieve their uh, objectives. And, and all of this tied in to personal empowerment, because my belief is that when we are empowered internally and we take control of our life, nothing is impossible. You can achieve so many wonderful things, and that's my mission. I love that. I love the empowerment. I think that's so important because often we will talk a big game about in a, in a company, as a partner, whatever, about what we want to be doing, but then the actual environment to execute that role or to live out in that way does not exist. So it is about a lot about empowerment. So Jana, you have been doing this work in the people and culture space for a while now. What is your favorite aspect of this work? What I love about it is seeing people blossom, seeing people discovering what is possible for them, seeing things bigger for themselves. And when you encourage someone to really look at what is possible and stretch themselves to that level, grow and go to the next level, something beautiful happens, you know, it, it's just um, gives joy, it gives me joy. And I think when we do that, when we help others to achieve and get to the next level and grow, um, they can help others as well. And, and that we can, we can make this place a beautiful, beautiful place uh, by helping each other to do so. Yeah, that ripple effect, right? Yes. Like those seeds get planted and seeds get planted. And I love that work. Yes. So I am hearing from a lot of leaders that engaging their employees is a challenge right now. What are your thoughts? I agree. I believe that um, engaging people is a challenge more than ever right now in these times where we more isolated, uh, where we may feel that our contribution is not visible or as visible, um, where it is not as easy to build the connectivity and uh, that type of um, safe, safety when we are all online. So I believe the, the leaders can help their teams through different ways to helpfully feel that they care number one, that they truly care about their people. Number two is to create a safe environment to be able to discuss things that may be uncomfortable. I think there's a lot of things in the air um, that people may want to discuss, but they may not feel comfortable about it. And then ultimately to help people grow and uh, help them with their development. So I think that when they see the trajectory or the pathway for themselves for growth and opportunities within company that will drive performance and engagement. Totally agree, Jana. So let's get really tactical because I'm like, I could talk about that all, that all day, but I want to make sure that our listeners out there are thinking, all right, so I, I want to help my team see that I really care. I want to create that safe environment that you talk about, Jana. I want to help them grow tactically. What is a behavior or an action that they could start doing tomorrow to bring that to life? Yes, number one, I believe for leaders, anybody who is leading or managing people is to look into gaining more awareness about yourself first, because sometimes we tend to project things on others, but we forget that we need to gain awareness about ourselves. So gaining awareness about ourselves, your style, your communication, um, how you make decisions, how you lead people is crucial. And then extend it to your team to help your team gain awareness of themselves. So your contributors, your best performance, maybe not so best performance, 
do they feel empowered? Do they realize what their strengths and opportunities are? Do they know where they can grow? And that can be done through different tools. But one of the tools that I love is uh, called Judgment Index, and it actually measures the engagement of workforce. And you can see how your team is engaged in four areas through personal orientation, personal perspective, personal reserve, and stressors. And let's admit, number four, stressors are all high right now for everybody. So that can give you uh, some tactical way or measure to see how engaged your workforce is and where can you improve yourself and where can you help your team to improve and grow. I love that. And I know you and I are big believers in tools, right? And I always tell people like, be careful. Tool is not the answer, right? The right structure, the right processes, the right people, and then the tools. Okay. But tools are handy. I mean, I'm a yes. big fan of Clifton Strengths. I know you like judgment index, any tool that can help us one, increase our self-awareness because yes. that is, I don't know if you saw that Cornell study about self-awareness, the number one predictor of success for CEOs is self-awareness, not charisma, not strategic thinking, self-awareness. So anything that helps us gain or increase, I should say, our own self-awareness, and then two, help create a common language among your team. Yeah. Right. Because now we're sort we we sort of see each other more. Mm -hmm. We have a common language. We're not using words like maybe I use a word strategic and you use a word like innovative or creative. Mm -hmm. And are we meaning the same thing? Are we meaning different things? So I will. I am with you. That common language. So I want to, I want to see like a, a leader. So yes, you can use a tool in the meantime, what's a behavior that they could start a phrase that they could start using a behavior that they could use with their team that could sort of embody what they want to accomplish with this tool. What I feel is important. Number one is creating safe space. People need to feel safe physically, emotionally, and mentally because right now is so uncertain. The times are so uncertain. And everybody, let's, let's admit, uh, still in jobs, they probably have a lot of work on their plates and they're still uncertain whether I'm gonna have my job tomorrow or not. So number one, creating that safe space to say, you are safe here with me. I have your best interest at hand and I want to help you succeed. And I'm here to listen and, and let's find a way how to, um, empower and encourage you to do the best work, the best performance that you can do for the organization. I think starting with that and having an active listening and truly having heart for caring, because you could sense whether the caring is genuine or it's just a formality check, check up weekly call. So having that sense and, and that approach would be very helpful. I think people feel connected and relatable and they feel um, that they're cared for and therefore they will try to do their best work for you. Yeah. And I don't know about you, Jana, but what I find is that depending on the numbers, right? You know, they say like eight out of a 10 leaders aren't going to be ever that great. One out of 10 is that natural, amazing leader. And probably one out of 10 can, can be made incrementally better. Those are bad stats, right? So I feel like there's probably a lot of people, leaders out there who are questioning their own self-worth as a leader, maybe got into it for the wrong reasons, regardless of all that stuff, guys, if you are listening to Jana and I right now, I want you to like simplify this in your mind. You are a leader period, right? You have accepted that role. And if you are willing to continue with the responsibility of that role, then you can start to shift your behavior every day. And I feel like some people get in their own heads, like, well, I'm just going to be fake. Like I'm obviously need to just continue with what I am doing because if I change, then people are going to think that I'm only doing it for X or Y or Z who cares? Like if the change is about meeting people where they're at and showing more love and care and psychological safety for them, mm -hmm. then do that, right? That is your job as a leader. So you are becoming a different person. You're potentially pulling up on a strength that you have um, been sort of pushing down and has been lying dormant. Like let that strength, let that strength shine. What are your thoughts? I absolutely agree with you. And I believe in addition to that, sometimes we feel our title is a, a, an addition or a requirement for our leadership. I want to reverse your thinking and, and encourage your people that may not have a title of a leader or manager or supervisor to start seeing themselves as leaders 
I am full believer that no matter what title you hold, you are the leader. You're leading your own life first, and then you're leading people around you in whatever capacity that you have. So shifting that mentality from just, you know, I'm a manager, that's why I'm a leader, uh, to a mentality that I have a people to encourage, to inspire, and to help them grow and be better. And I want those people that under my care, under my supervision, to have a shift of their mentality that they are leaders now. Although they may not have a title, or they may not have a supervisor or VP or whatever behind their names, they are leaders. And when you come to them from that perspective of self-empowerment and encouragement for them to see things bigger for themselves, uh, that can make tremendous impact in how people behave and the, the action they take and the decisions they make. Oh, so good, Jana. Thank you. And I hope whoever is listening really takes that message to heart and just says like, all right, what is one thing that I could do better or differently tomorrow to start creating that safety? So I know we're nearing the end of our time, Shauna. So let's do real two quick questions. First one, who would you want to shout out as doing really good work in the ring around people and culture um, that you have connected with, or that you think potentially would even be a good guest on the show? I am in love with Tiffany Castagno. Find her on LinkedIn. She's yeah. doing a phenomenal work. She has an HR background. Um, but right now she's really encouraging people to think differently and to be more open. She's leading conversations about race um, and, and um, really love the work she's doing. I, I think she's going to be a phenomenal guest on your show, Anna. Awesome. I had you mute there. Thank you for the suggestion for Tiffany. Let's go to a favorite resource. Who or what has advanced your thinking around people and culture? Number one is uh, Miss Claude Silver from Weiner Media. You know her and many people know her. I admire her. I hope I can get in touch with her and meet her personally. But right now I'm a fellow follower of her work and her light and her brilliance. Uh, as a woman, she inspires me. As a professional, uh, she fascinates me. And uh, the work that she's doing and the light that she's portraying is just uh, amazing. So I hope we can replicate that ripple effect and, and spread more joy and encouragement around. And number two, actually, I have this book, Measure What Matters by John Doerr. Uh, great resource, uh, a lot of information about how to structure your objectives and key results and how it ties into your culture. Uh, a lot of transparency for executive level can lead to great results in your organization. So grab that book, Measure What Matters by John Doerr. It's really great resource. I loved it. Oh, love it, Shauna. Thank you so much. Thank you for the recommendations. Thank you for the wisdom today. And really just appreciate all you're doing for people and culture in whatever space that you touch. So thank you. My pleasure, Anna. Thank you for having me today. Yes. And peace and progress to everyone.